everybody and welcome to your next C++ Made Easy HD tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be looking more into vectors and stuff like that right uh, so before in our last tutorial we made a vector of ints right and uh, we call this numbers right and one thing I want to note right before I continue, uh, before I continue, just like with classes and objects and stuff, how you can make an array of objects. If you're making a class or something like that, you can make a vector of the class as well, right? So you would treat the vector just like you would treat another array, uh, just so you know that. Uh, but anyways, uh, before we we set numbers, right, and uh, we use the push back use numbers dot push back in order to add values to it right uh, but let's look at something right now so with arrays we whenever we declare an array we set a size for the array um, right as we create it right uh, so let us uh, if we put the constructor in there and we put the value 4 in there right that means it already has four elements in there right so we already have a number number zero and if we were to call this let me say number zero then when we run this we get the value 20 okay uh, so what this does is that it creates four elements for us uh, upon creation right if we never had this there and we tried to put number zero number zero doesn't exist right so when we run this we get an error because there's no there's uh, there's no elements within that vector so we once we set it that we said that we're going to be using four vectors then we can do that and if we specify four and then we say uh numbers dot push back the value 15 will be in the next element, right? So the last element in this will be numbers three since there's four elements. Remember it counts from zero, one, two, three. So if I call STDC out numbers four for the fifth element, then we should get the value 15. Okay, we get the value 15 as you can see. So say we have four elements and we want to just um, set a default uh, a default value for them, right? Uh, in the next parameter, if we put a comma or something, then all these four, the first four elements will be given the value 100. So let's just say two or whatever. The value will be 100, okay? So that's one thing you can do if you want to set the first four elements and assign values to it, you can do that. Okay, uh, so let's say that we have, and I know this is probably a lot coming to you uh, at once, but it's little minuscule things, and if you need to rewatch this just to grasp everything, then you can. Uh, so let's say we have numbers two or whatever, right? I'm set to four hundred. Uh, using the vectors constructor, what we could do is just copy what's in. Sorry, we can copy what's in the in another vector. So in this case, numbers and numbers two are the exact same. So we should get the same results when we run this program. So we get the same result, a hundred. Okay. So uh, this is all cool and everything. It's all fun and games right now, right? But let's uh, get into another big reason why uh vectors are are cool right so whenever we had arrays we had to define a, a size for an array right and we never really learned about the size of function but we could have used the size of and i will be teaching that later but we could use this size of function to uh find out how many elements are in the array right uh, but with a vector, it's really easy to find out the size of the, how many elements are within the uh, vector. We call the name of it dot size. And what that will do is it will spit out the amount of elements in the array. Uh, yeah, within the vector. Sorry. So if we want to display all the elements within the vector, we could just loop till the vector's size and uh, display all of them to the screen. So let's just see this, it should display all 100s. So four 100s to the screen. 
Okay, so using the size uh, method, then we can uh, set a size to it, right? And, uh, sorry. So, but if we don't, if we set these uh, to four, right? But we don't assign a value to it. Let's run it and see what we get. So we get all zero because the default value is set to zero if you don't actually define a value for it, okay? Uh, so that's just for integers. If you don't assign a value to it, and I believe it becomes zero or an undefined number, or I'm not really sure, but in this case, it defines the it sets the value to zero. Okay, uh, so that's in case you don't do that. So uh, whenever you assign a size to it, that's the number that it will uh, place in here. So there's uh, some other things that I just want to show you quickly before I end this tutorial so we're gonna put we're gonna call numbers dot reserve okay now when we do whenever you call numbers dot pushback what it does is that um, because you're allocating memory right it has to re it has to reallocate memory and stuff like that because it is a new size right and every single time you make a call to push back, it's reallocating, so on and so forth. Whenever we call reserve, right, what reserve does is that it reserves the amount of space that you need in memory already, right? So you, so for the first four elements that you create, whenever you call numbers.pushback, for the first four elements, it doesn't have to reallocate because it already has the space reserved that's why it's called reserve it has this amount of space reserved for four elements right so if you know that you're gonna have a maximum of say a hundred elements or something like that uh, it would be a good idea to call the reserve keyword so then you don't have to keep on reallocating because it it's a one it's one factor of optimization when it comes to C++ and optimize C++ is always good C++ okay uh, so that's what it does now don't get this twisted whenever we reserve four elements whatever it doesn't change the size we still have zero elements within numbers right we still have zero elements this is just reserving a space so that whenever we call push back something it, it has enough space to put it in there so for example if we run this program right the size is going to be equal to zero so nothing's going to be displayed to the screen as you can see nothing is displayed because the size has not changed just the uh, the space the reserve space has changed now if we look at this if we call resize uh, we can set a new size uh, to say 4 so now whenever we call resize then uh, the size actually changes because we are um, setting four elements right four default elements so we should get four zeros yes yeah, so we get four zeros and I believe in here we can assign a value to all of them so let's say five so just like we did before they all get the value five okay uh, so that's one thing to work with uh, resize and reserve so say for I think say for example we call reserve this is the last thing I'm going to be showing you uh, so we reserved for four spaces right we have a size property and I believe if we call capacity what capacity does is that it lets us know exactly how much space we have reserved like how much space in total uh, so let's see if it does that and um, there's nothing in there so let's just display a star let's see if this works yeah, so the capacity will display four stars, right? Because this is the capacity, it just says how much it actually holds, right? So let's say, for example, uh, so if we set this reserve to 10, right? This, this it can, it has a possibility of holding 10 elements, right? So say you wanted to fill in a value of each of the elements. Say you want to loop the amount of times that we actually reserved and put a value in there. We could put numbers, uh, say numbers dot pushback. We could put I, whatever, right? So we could loop to how much space we have reserved based on the capacity. 
because if we call numbers size, the size of numbers is zero, right? But it has a possibility of holding 10 spaces. So once we call capacity, it tells us the uh, possibility of how much we how much space that we actually have reserved in our vector. And we can use that for an advantage, right? So if we don't want to actually loop past the amount of space we have reserved, we can use that using the capacity, right? And so on and so forth. So I hope that's a lot to grasp and that's a lot to take in, I know. I hope that really didn't confuse you guys, but if you guys ever need to refer to a concept of vectors, then you can always refer back to this video. So I hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you have a problem, you can post on my forum at codingmadeeasy.ca slash forum. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. And...